Good afternoon. I'm very sorry it's been the best part of three years since I made four little videos of how a crystal AM receiver could gradually turn into a one valve or one tube receiver. Um, so I'm sorry about the delay, uh, but uh, better late than never. Well, here we go with part five. A couple of points. Uh, someone asked how I did the diagrams of showing how a, roughly how a valve works. And those were done in uh, Photoshop, um, altered and drawn with lines and circles and added up and um, then sequenced in the video editing program to make the movement. Uh, it was great fun, uh, slightly tedious and I've lost them there somewhere on a hard drive somewhere but they've gone. Um, the other question was why was I using twin gang variable condensers or variable capacitors? Uh, well like this, these, uh, this type of variable capacitor with two lots of interleaving veins to vary the capacitance. And the answer is that actually it's because these are the ones which are most commonly turn up and you can get them at um, amateur radio rallies, vintage wireless um, meetings and things like that. Uh, and in, in the circuits we've done we only ever used one of these uh, sections. So um, that's why they're, twin they're just variable capacitors. Um, so, well there we are. So, um, now where were we? Here's the circuit of our receiver as it finished up and um, the guy who built it uh, was very happy with it um, but he couldn't pick up very many distant stations. Um, the, the, the set worked quite well, the headphone volume was adequate um, but his friend at work could pick up Radio Paris and he couldn't so uh, what else uh, might he do? Well. Technology advanced very, very quickly during the Great War, 1914-18, the last war towards does advanced technology. And um, during that period, um, a number of different people, sort of independently, um, had an idea, uh, as valves developed very quickly also during that war, they had an idea about what would happen if... Well, the idea that these various people had, all around the same time, was what would happen if you see where the red arrows are, what would happen if we took a little bit of the energy from the anode circuit and fed it back into the tuned circuit, fed it back round in other words, would it reinforce itself? Would it somehow be better or louder or different? Well, it turned out to be a very good idea indeed and uh, various people patented it in different countries all around 1914-18 and um, they got patents and, and the uh, the rivalry was intense and uh, companies that bought the patents went into litigation against each other to stop other people using it. And the, but the, the process was called, in this country, usually called reaction, to react with what had gone before. Uh, in the USA it was usually called regeneration and there were other terms. Uh, but the fact remained it uh, worked uh, very well indeed. And here's the circuit, the revised circuit. Uh, the wire runs from the anode of the valve through a coil of wire positioned close to the coil in the tuned circuit uh, and then carries on and it's connected to earth via this uh, via the, another variable capacitor, we've got three now and that's shown in red and so um, if you increase the um, capacitor more current will flow through the red coil and it will be coupled into the large coil of the tuned circuit uh, really, in retrospect, an extremely simple idea. Actually, it has been suggested more than once that some of these discoveries of the um, power of uh, reaction or re uh, regeneration um, actually arose accidentally when people were working with radio and s observed this phenomenon. Uh, and if it was discovered by somebody by accident, it would be yet another example, of which there are many in, in science and technology, of something which was uh, discovered by accident. So, well, where's the radio? And it's right down there. And voila, here is the radio, which now has three variable capacitors, uh, one valve, and um, a new coil. Yes, we, the most important component is a new coil with three windings, 
uh, instead of two as before. Uh, everything else is the same. The winding at the bottom is the aerial coupling winding. Um, this larger coil is for the tuned circuit and the new winding on top is the one which couples back some of the energy from the anode of the valve back into this main coil here and that's where the uh, reaction or regeneration occurs. We spent more time on this coil, the, the others were quite untidy. And these little wires here, we fastened them to a, a tag board because they would be very fiddly to, to work with uh, if they were flopping about. This is the sort of business area and um, the wiring looks a lot more complicated than it really is. Most of these wires are just connections to earth, to ground potential. Uh, but of course this is wood so uh, we, have, we have to actually wire them all together. Here is the grid leak resistor and the little capacitor which we described in part 4. And here's our valve holder. Uh, and there are no other components except this which is not... Uh, th this is because this valve requires 2 volts for the filament and we're using a computer, an old computer power supply that provides 3.3 .3 volts so we need, this is some wire wrapped around a, a high value resistor which comes to 14 ohms which is sufficient to get us uh, 2 volts on here so that's an extra sort of component and then the high tension supply which is about 90 volts comes in through here, I'm sorry I've run out of red wire this should be red and black, it's all black it runs in here goes out to the headphones uh, and then goes to the anode of the valve. So it's exactly the same as it was before except with the extra winding here the connection from the anode goes into the coil at the top and then it goes to this variable capacitor which we normally would leave open and then we can increase the reaction and see what happens. I've tuned the radio in without any reaction uh, so it's working as it was before and um, I can hear it. Uh, now I'll increase the reaction. And it's now almost too loud. To listen to it I would move the phones off my ears. Uh, but of course you only have my word for that. Uh, how can we demonstrate it uh, more graphically? There's a function on this video camera called zoom microphone so when you get closer to something it gets louder. I'm going to zoom in now slowly on this earpiece here. And you might or might not be able to hear anything. I'll now zoom out. Now I shall advance the reaction control. I've advanced the reaction, now I'll zoom in again. And this time I suspect you can probably hear a voice coming out of the headphones. Well, before we've had situations uh, whereby uh, we could hardly hear anything at all and uh, the rustling of a newspaper would drown out the sound. Now we can hear the headphones even when they're on the table and I've just put them on and the sound is actually too loud. So for the first time in uh, history we need to actually turn the gain, turn the volume down in order to hear the uh, program material so uh, it's a great step forward. So this is really great, I mean can we keep on advancing this reaction to make it louder and louder? Uh, would it for example get loud enough to uh, operate a loudspeaker because then we could get rid of the headphones and walk about the room and listen to the radio, now that would be really amazing. Um, but so can we keep advancing the reaction? Uh, no, I'm afraid you can't because eventually what happens is this. Um, to demonstrate what happens if we increase the reaction too much, here's a normal ordinary radio, medium wave radio, with a news broadcast on it, and this uh, our receiver is tuned to the same frequency. Outreach by the, uh, the but if I increase the reaction too much, or 
or some other Taliban to enter the political process rather than fighting on. What is happening? Now, what has happened is very serious, uh, virtually catastrophic. You see, what we're employing with the reaction is controlled feedback, and it gets louder and louder. But there comes a point uh, when it becomes uncontrolled feedback. You've all heard the howl back of microphones and loudspeakers in concert halls or you know uh, places. Oh, howl, it's very nasty. Well, that's what happened there, and the valve began to oscillate at or very near the frequency to which it was tuned and the one we were trying to reinforce. Um, so everything became distorted. What is worse in a simple set like this, that oscillation gets back out up our aerial and is, is retransmitted. So if anyone else uh, in next door, in, there's a lot of houses close together here, had been listening to that program, they would have heard the sound of our set oscillating and it would come on their radio like or do the characteristic uh, radio sound of, of or so there is a limit to the amount of reaction that we can use and used uh, within bounds we get a very great increase in the gain of our signal so that we've even got an embarrassment of volume in the headphones which is fantastic really because I mean two or three videos ago you could hardly hear anything it's great um, but you must be careful not to oscillate otherwise we'll interfere with our neighbours um, so is that it uh, well no because um, uh, there is another great benefit of the judicious use of reaction which I'll tell you about now well when we increase the reaction um, the signal gets louder up to a point then it starts to oscillate which is bad uh, but while, it's, uh, while that uh, gain is increasing, something else is happening to the signal. It's getting narrower in bandwidth. Now let me demonstrate that uh, by an analogy using sound waves. Here's a shot of a computer screen of an audio processing program. And uh, this is a paragraphic equaliser in which you can draw your own curve. And I've centred this on a frequency of 440 hertz. Pretend there's the cursor. Pretend that this is the tuning dial of your radio. Right, and then this big hump here is a powerful signal from a local station. Um, now when we increase the reaction, one of the things that happens is that this skirt width, as they call it, gets less. Um, if I move the cursor in the right direction, you see it's getting less. Um, eventually feedback occurs. But we can take advantage of this because, for example, let me put it back where it was before. Supposing we don't want this loud local station, but supposing we want a station there, such as Radio Paris, for example, we won't be able to hear it because it's engulfed in this other station. So if we reduce, if we increase the regeneration on our local loud station like that, then this station, the one here, will appear. And we will be able to, with any luck, tune that in. It won't be very loud. And that's a great advantage of uh, another great advantage of reaction or regeneration. So there you have it. Reaction, uh, regeneration, call it what you will. Uh, it's very useful. Of course it's a bit fiddly because we've got three knobs to uh, adjust. And they all interact with each other to some extent. If you decrease the aerial coupling, uh, then the the reaction will uh, be enhanced and it may the set may burst into oscillation which you don't want um, but nevertheless uh, we can do lots of things with it and it's now 25 past 7 on uh, Monday the 6th of January 2014 and uh, just under half an hour ago I carefully manipulated the various knobs in such a way as I've described and I received the following Yes, about 7pm tonight we recorded this wave file which lasts for 50 seconds. I'll play you a bit of it and you'll see these peaks here are the characteristic sounds of tuning in very carefully a um, re regenerative circuit 
because you get little bits of semi feedback, and as you gradually get nearer into tune, they sort of diminish. <laughs> Le périphérique intérieur en accordéon de la porte de Châtillon Rouge, 10 minutes aussi. Et puis, si vous êtes sur le périphérique intérieur, pour quitter Paris euh, et prendre la N13 direction la défense, vous avez un quart d'heure de ralentissement. Le prochain flash à votre trafic, c'est dans moins d'un quart d'heure. En plus, c'est un numéro 1 sur la voie trafic en région parisienne. Bonne soirée, bonne route à vous, il est 20h. Bonsoir. Bonsoir, bonsoir à tous. Un premier spectacle de Dieu donné interdit. Oui, c'est à Bordeaux, le maire UMP de la ville. Alain Juppé annonce ce soir qu'il ne permet pas la tenue de la représentation du polémique qui était prévu le 26 janvier prochain dans sa commune. Quad erat demonstrandum, I think. And uh, radio enthusiast who we followed his history uh, can finally go into work tomorrow and say to his friend, um, yeah, Yes, I got Radio Paris last night. And his friend might say to him, oh, what are they talking about? He says, I don't speak French. And um, our enthusiast, our hero, would say, oh, well, you know, yes, they talked about to Accordéon, and they mentioned Paris, and then one of them said, bonsoir. And uh, so that's it. And that's uh, the regeneration. It's very good and very useful. And um, true, it's only 300 miles from Birmingham to Paris as the crow flies or the radio wave propagates. Uh, but it's a long shot from where we began uh, three, nearly three years ago, uh, receiving a 500 kilowatt station from a distance of 14 miles using a couple of pieces of paper. And so watch out for part six. And um, it's now it gone eight o'clock, so um, I, I can have, have a, dink, a drink, a toast, and um, to the uh, citizens of uh, la, la Belle France. Um, Although it's actually uh, California wine. So, hail California and long live regeneration. A votre santé. Oh.